Hello, my name is Sharon Gurung. And originally, I'm from Nepal. I came to United, St United States in 2010. Currently, I'm working with an organization called Business Center for New Americans, and I do the community outreach and community partnership for the organization. Today, I'm with Deepika and Anus at their podcast at the end of the day. Thank you so much, Shering, for being on our podcast. Of course, my pleasure. I'm so happy to be here. Shering, mm -hmm. <laughs> tell us, uh, what is BCNA, Business Center for New Americans? What does it actually do? Uh, sure. Uh, so BCNE is a non-profit uh, CDFI. Uh, it's called Community Development Financial Institution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are more mission-based financial institutions. We are not a bank, but our goal is to really provide financial product and services to underserved communities. Mm -hmm. So BCNE works with small business owners in New York City, and we um, provide affordable small business loan, financial education, and technical assistance to business owners to actually help them start a business or help them grow their business. And Shiri, uh, we were talking over the phone last week and you told me that you didn't have um, you know, academic degree in America, but you do have an academic degree in Nepal. You did an MBA in Nepal. So tell me, how did you, you know, crack this job market without having an American degree in America? <laughs> sure. You know, um, when, I, when I came to U.S., you know, that was the thought in my mind, like, mm -hmm. you know, um, like, should I get an American degree you know, in order to get the job, right? Because I thought, like, you know, you know the, the, the traditional or the conventional way, you know, like sending resume where they would look for the degree. I mean, how I got my job was, um, you know, the, the connection and the relationships that I made, mm -hmm. um, you know, through different um, interactions. So, you know, uh, volunteering in nonprofit organization like uh, Adhikar, Chaya, IRC, um, you know, these organizations, I mean, the people that I met there mm -hmm. uh, during volunteering, um, you know, that really helped me. Let's break down more now. Yes. So and we, we want to get into the details about mm -hmm. your volunteering. Yeah, the nitty gritty sure. things, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very because happy to share when that. when you say volunteering, it clearly means you're unpaid. You are volunteering out of your free time, sure. right? And it is difficult to have a free time because you also have to have your surviving job. Sure. So let's uh, get into details. Sure. You came to the U.S. in 2000. Mm -hmm. And yes. then walk us through your journey. Yeah. And then what was your surviving job? <laughs> when I first came to U.S., I thought, you know, since I, I, you know, I had so much experience back home, I thought, you know, it was it would be so easy for me to get a job, I, honestly, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I mean, I applied for a few jobs. Wait, before you say that, what kind of experience did you have in Nepal? In Nepal, so I worked, uh, you know, a, in uh, a very reputed hotel, um, you know, for for. A year and a half um, and then I worked in British Council for two years as a project management and that's when I um, you know I felt that this is the area I want to go to and, and I want to continue working in you know the international development and uh, uh, community work field, right. you right? have a solid experience in Nepal mm -hmm. I, I, I believe so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. so so that's what I thought you know it'll be easy for me to get job here um, I just felt like you know oh, I have the experience and I have you know a, uh, a degree in Nepal I, I'm a master's student but after I came here, I did apply for a few jobs, right? I, I applied in British Council because there was an office uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, I applied in a rotary office because, you know, back home, I was also a Rotaract. You know, so I had all those connections, but, you know, like I applied for like 10 or 12 jobs, no response, right? And slowly it started to kick me that, you know, it, it's not that easy. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, so you have to, you know, have a survival job. So mm -hmm. I started working in restaurants. Um, I, I worked. Uh, for almost three years in a restaurant right. uh, before I actually started working professionally. Um, and during that time, you know, um, it, I, I, I felt that I have to somehow, you know, get a professional experience. So that's why I started looking for a volunteering opportunity because I just wanted to get into, you know, a, 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 an, a, an organization or an office to, you know, to, to make, you know, my, to feel that I'm, I can still, you know, um, do the office work and you know don't want it didn't want it to lose that touch so um you know and the best way for me to get in was you know through community uh, nepali community organization so when right. i did google nepali community organization adhikar popped out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for those who are not aware about what adhikar is if you could say in a line what yeah. is adhikar so adhikar is a non-profit uh, working with uh, nepali speaking community so their primary um, area is on worker rights mm -hmm. um, and they also do a lot of other work like citizenship english classes uh, but they mainly is uh, to work uh, for the worker rights okay. mm -hmm. they are always looking for an english class teacher 
teacher, mm-hmm. right? A tutor, uh, because they they host three classes every Sunday, so there is you know three volunteers needed, and also they have uh, a, 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 an English class on Wednesday. I don't know they still have it on Wednesday or not, but mm-hmm. you know when I was uh, when I started they had, so they they definitely you know needed more uh, volunteers, so that that opportunity was there. So um, you know then I started you know doing be uh, t- started teaching English in um, in the beginning beginners level uh, mm-hmm. on Sundays. Okay, uh, it was for an hour, but obviously there's a lot of work. Like you have to prepare the materials mm-hmm. and you know so. Uh, but I really enjoyed. Um, you know, it it was helpful to kind of gain confidence. I got the opportunity to you know build that uh, professional relationship mm-hmm. with this, all these amazing people. Yeah, and then. Yeah, and then um, so you know, at the same time, I was working I- in restaurants, and then I got my work permit. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, through a friend, you know, um, I got a, a job at an embroidery firm. So it was a small firm, just three staff uh, mm-hmm. in Manhattan, uh, completely not related with my uh, you know area of work. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's a fashion industry. Right. I worked there for two years. How come you got that job? Because you're not from from fashion industry, and you're doing this volunteer work at Adhikar. So yeah. how did that happen? So while I was working in the uh, in the restaurant, so the one um, one of the uh, staff, mm-hmm. so she, I I don't know she she knew about this job opening, okay. and through her own contact, right? Um, so it was an Indian uh, mm-hmm. firm, so you know, so Indians always have connection with the Nepali community, right? right? right. Mm-hmm. So she asked me, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if uh, I was interested, uh, because she knew that you know I had. Uh, professional work experience right. and then you know I, I, I may be a good fit like mm. just to start a new first job uh, but I didn't have my work permit then okay right mm-hmm. so a few months later I got my work permit and uh, when I asked her is that job still open she said it is okay. Okay, right great. Uh, and then I said like yes I'm you know interested and then I went met this uh, ma- the, the founder the president um, and then you know she liked me and then I started working there so great. yeah mm-hmm. so that that's how I got into again right yeah. mm-hmm. some a referral some right. somebody uh, recommended but, but so okay. now that you're working in the embroidery uh, form or the company were you still volunteering I was okay. I was I was still volunteering at Adhikar at that uh-huh. time yeah um, I I was actively involved with Adhikar um, five for five years until I recently had my you know baby and I could not devote mm. that much time but um, you know volunteering or you know even volunteering for the events like five years I was very actively involved mm. with Adhikar um, so while I was working at an embroidery firm um, you know uh, uh, um, I was also wor- uh, volunteering Adhikar at the events. So it was mm-hmm. not like, you know, uh, a regular mm-hmm. hours, but like, you know, in one of the events, big events, you know, mm-hmm. so just giving, um, you know, working for a few hours um, in, in those events. But again, you know, that helped to under- you know, meet with some of the staff there, mm-hmm. you know, just to make friends. Um, so when an opportunity came in China, so, right. you know, again, so they uh, they said like, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an entry level job. Yeah, but you have to say, what is China, what is China? in a one line again? Oh. Okay, sure. <laughs> A lot of non-profits. Uh, so China CDC, uh, it's a non-profit. Um, they are a housing development organization. So the primary work is to on housing rights uh, to help first-time home buyers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they, they do a lot of foreclosure work um, and, and, and tenant organizing. You were volunteering at Adhikar and you were working at this embroidery firm at the same time. And how did you get connected with China and how did that job happen? So Chaya, like I said, so mm. I was volunteering there, and my um, my cousin's sister, she used to work there. So she mm. used to encourage me to, you know, volunteer, um, you know, if there was any uh, big events coming up, mm. um, you know. So they, she used to mention, like, you know, we are we looking for volunteer opportunity. So I would, you know, go and. Um, you know, uh, do those volunteering work. So that helped me understand, uh, you know, the staff, to meet the staff. Right. So I, before I st- oh, you know, applied for the job, I already knew all the staff. Oh, oh wow. Okay. So they knew me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when the uh, when the position opened up, when I went for the interview, both the interviews, I already knew them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was so easy for me, you know, because they knew me as a person. Right. And um, so it, it just, you know, helped, you know, to make that connection. Right. And, um, um, you know, and so it, it was easy when they asked me, like, why do you want to work in China? So I said, you know, it it's going to be very comfortable for me you know it doesn't feel like I'm working in a new organization it just feels like you know I'm working in somewhere I already know all of them mm-hmm. so uh, I think yeah so I think they like that answer and that's how I got the job I was in China for two and a half years that's when the the next opportunity mm-hmm. uh, at BCNE mm-hmm. uh, you know I w- came up mm-hmm. um, and you know they were looking for uh, a community outreach person, right. uh, you know, who is from the Himalayan community, who knows the Queens area. Right, right. Um, and uh, my supervisor, uh, so he suggested, you know, like 
because uh, he knows my work and he knows uh, so he he recommended my name your in supervisor at Chaya at Chaya recommended, recommended my name yeah. for the position because uh, wow. he knew the existing CD so um, yeah so so that helped that really helps uh, mm-hmm. you know the 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 word of mouth the referrals yes mm-hmm. um, you know yeah I, I I don't believe in the traditional way of you know applying to you know, sending the resume. Right, right. Yeah, I, I really don't believe. And and I personally, I can say this because all the jobs that I got here mm-hmm. is, um, you know, through the, the referral and through the relationships that I built mm-hmm. uh, through all the interaction, volunteer work or from my existing work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is so interesting because uh, uh, like, Chen, you just mentioned that, you know, uh, the conventional way of approaching for a job is, you know, writing a resume and then applying applying and doing, doing all those traditional things that norm, normal people would do exactly. even i've been there even yeah. you have been there yeah. when you started yeah. applying for british council some some of the jobs but the thing is like there's another way too which you found and which you pursued now let's tell our v- viewers how important this volunteer works is tell our audience tell as our well. audience <laughs> as well sorry yeah yeah uh, mm. uh, sure um so if you're starting a new professional life in us um, you know, see, see, since you don't know anyone, right? right. Um, so, I believe there is two way. Either you, um, you know, go get into a, a like academic degree. Mm-hmm. So at least you, you meet, you have classmates, you have professors. True. You know, so those are also professional relationship. Mm-hmm. But I didn't go that route. You know, so right. so for me, how do I build those professional relationships or those, you know, the connections? Mm-hmm. So I had to get in. Um, so that's how I, you know, felt like you know I should start with volunteering. And when I looked for opportunities, there were so many volunteering opportunities available in different nonprofits. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, the easiest way to get in was through community, like from from my own community, because I have the a- advantage of speaking Nepali and Hindi. Mm-hmm. So it's it so that is how I would stand out for all the new people that I meet, like you know, the new arrivals, I always recommend them, you know, s- vo- do volunteer work. I mm. know it is, you know, it's unpaid, right. uh, you know, so it's it's difficult, but you don't have to do five, you know, days a week. Mm-hmm. You can do one day a week, you can do on weekend, you can do part-time, you know, it's, it's just, um, you know, to understand the work culture and, and to build, build the connection because I believe these are the people who are eventually going to help you land up your next job. Mm-hmm. If anybody would like to get in touch with you, Turing, are you comfortable sharing your email address? Sure. H-I-T-S-H-E-R-I-N-G at Gmail. And if you happen to you know, email Turing, make sure you write at the end of the day in the subject title so that Turing knows where these emails are coming from. Sure. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we would like to thank you so much, Turing, for your time. Of and course. For this and, and sharing this precious experience. Right. Yeah. And we would also like to thank uh, Better Works yep. for providing this very nice, cozy recording studio to record this podcast interview with Chiring today. Yeah, and yeah, uh, we, have come, we have come to the end of this podcast. And please do subscribe to our channel and please log in to our website, podcast at the end of the day.com. And if you want to reach out to a guest like Chiring, feel free to reach out to them because there's always an email address uh, in the description. So find that email address, write down the uh, subject title at the end of the day and reach out to them because they are here to help you because they have been through those phases that you guys are going through. Yes. And if there is anything in particular that you personally feel like you want to talk about that would be helpful to new upcoming, new, newly arriving immigrants in the U.S., reach out to us and we can talk about your particular experience in the next episode of our podcast. So, until we catch you next week. Bye-bye. Hey guys, a quick note. If you have a personal story that you think might be helpful to the newly arriving immigrants in the US, please contact us. We would love to feature you in our podcast. Go to our website podcast at the end of the day dot com and write to us by going to the feedback section. And by the way, if you love this podcast, you can support us with a small donation. Your help will enable us to continue producing more episodes. The link to support our podcast is is in the description below.